just not on, is it? Again? Can we do it? Okay. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly chose you now. Choose to surrender our lives, willingly our knees will bow. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give. Let us come before our God this morning. Let us come and soak our roots, which are so, I was going to say old, that sounds a little bit old. <laughs> With so much tradition, let us soak our roots in God's living water, in God's rivers of life. Let us receive the life that God has to offer to us this morning and so bear fruit and so reach out into the community to make a difference. Let us stand and worship our God, our God who has been with us since this church began 107 years ago, our God who is with us today, and our God who goes before us into the future. Let us stand and praise our God singing our opening song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing a song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. 
You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand years before my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years before my evermore. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship your holy name. Oh, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul. I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Let us pray. Holy God, we do indeed worship your holy name. We praise you, we delight in you, and we pray that we would feel your presence this morning, that your presence would come and dwell among us in this church and in our lives. Oh God, we pray. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Have a seat. Hello, hello. There we go. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Happy 187th anniversary, and welcome to Wall Street this morning. If you're visiting with us today, we just uh, pray that you'll feel part of the family. We welcome you. We invite you to stay after the service and uh, spend a time of uh, having coffee and chatting together in Heritage Hall, which is straight through the back doors there in the middle of the sanctuary. Um, on behalf of myself, Pastor Dave, Pastor Kim, Pastor Stuart, and our worship choir leadership team, we welcome you here today. It's a real joy for me to introduce our um, guest speaker for our anniversary service, um, Reverend Dr. Barbara Robinson is an Anglican priest. Um, she was until a very short time ago uh, just across the road at St. Paul's Anglican. Um, we've known each other for quite a few years because before we both came into our present denominations, we were both Salvation Army officers for many years. And um, it's just a, a real pleasure for me to have Barbara here this morning. Uh, Barbara's a specialist in religious history and has been a professor of history, Wesleyan theology, and the Biblical and Theological Foundations of Ministry. As well as teaching, Barbara's also served as a hospital chaplain. She lives here in Brockville with her husband, Malcolm, who is actually speaking across the road today. Uh, <laughs> he's also a very accomplished minister and leader. She loves her family, loves her God. And could you please give a warm Wall Street welcome to Barbara? I'd also like to welcome the family and friends of Reed Jason McFadden, uh, who's going to be baptized this morning. I think you're over there somewhere. Yes, welcome to Wall Street this morning. And please join us after the service today. There is a wonderful big anniversary cake back there in Heritage Hall. So uh, please join us for, for a time of celebration together. Tonight at Celebrate Life, I am going to be leading a, a healing service. So we would uh, like to invite you back again at 10 to 6 this evening for that. Also, if you haven't bought your copy, I meant to bring mine down with me this morning, of the story. Let's see, how many people now have bought the story? Wow. I know there's something like 170 sold so far. Um, 
It's, it's wonderful. It's the narrative novel version of the Bible. It's um, far easier to read. It's in chronological order, and it's in a novel form. And it's, uh, we're following it each week as we go through our services. And well worth you picking up. If you haven't got one yet, they are available here for $15 um, in Heritage Hall, I believe, after the service. Linda James has an announcement she'd like to make. Good morning, everybody. This is a reminder that next Sunday, the Outreach Committee will provide an opportunity for the Can Canadian Food Grains Bank. It's the 12th year that we've raised funds for this organization whose tagline is a Christian response to hunger. The bank works in partnership with Canadian churches, including the United Church of Canada. Last year, the Food Grains Bank helped to improve the lives of over a million people in 39 countries by providing food in emergencies and by helping communities develop sustainable agricultural techniques to better feed themselves. This year, there's a special need because of the growing refugee crisis in the world. The Canadian Food Grains Bank has been responding since 2012 to the crisis in Syria through eight projects in refugee camps in Jordan and Lebanon, as well as helping displaced people in Syria itself, and the need is enormous. Next Sunday, please join us in Heritage Hall after the service. Make a donation to the Food Grains Bank and sample the delicious baking provided by members of the Outreach Committee. Donations of $10 or more are eligible for tax-deductible receipts and the Canadian government will match all our donations on a four-to-one basis. Last year, we raised over $1,300 at this event, and it grew to 6500 when matched by the government. We look forward to your support again this year, and you know, come and share the goodies in Heritage Hall after church next week. Thanks. Also next Sunday is uh, an, our soup and conversation day after the service. This uh, delicious soup will be available in the living room as we continue our dialogue on the uh, future vision of our church. You're very welcome to stay again after the service next Sunday to do that. I'm also looking at setting up a grief support group here at Wall Street. I know I have a couple of people who are willing to be helpers in that, but I'm also looking for a couple of people who would be willing to... Uh, work with me as, as a leader of that group and um, I can give support as is needed. I think it's really important to have a grief support group going here at Wall Street. So if you're interested, please see me or contact Kathy in the office. This last uh, week at our church board, the church approved the sponsorship of two Syrian refugee families by Wall Street uh, in conjunction with Christ Church at Lynn and St. John's United Church as well. So the three churches will be working together to sponsor two um, Syrian families to bring here into Brockville. Uh, there will be a meeting, if you're interested, that will be held on Thursday, October 22nd at 10.30 a.m. at Christ Church in Lynn. Um, so please just let Kathy know in the office if you're interested in attending there. I don't think I see Dr. John Taylor this morning. So when you see him next... It was his 90th birthday yesterday, so uh, you can let him know. Um, after the uh, baptism this morning, the youth will be meeting in Heritage Hall um, during the service. Um, and at this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's story. Oh yeah, uh, the youth are supposed to go to Heritage Hall after after when? After the baptism. And oh yeah, so you guys have to stay till after the baptism. Yeah, yeah. All right. You want to kind of kind of hunker down for a second? Hmm? I am going to play you a tune. You didn't know I could play a musical instrument, did you? No. <clears throat> mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what that, what that? Oh, I am so amazing. Uh, did you know what the tune was? Yeah. What was it? Happy birthday. Anybody here ever had a birthday? Two, three. Yeah? Yeah. Three people have had a birthday. Anybody out there ever had a birthday? Yeah. How old were you when you on your first birthday? You were one. That was a trick question. How old were you when you were first born? Zero. There you go. How old are you now? Okay. You're eight. How old are you? Nine. He went to your birthday. How old are you? You had a birthday party before? Yeah? Do you know that this is the church's birthday today? Uh huh. Do you know how old the church is? You do. How old? 187. Pastor Dave gave it away before. <laughs> yeah. 187. Can you imagine being 187? No. No, I. I I don't think any, except maybe God is 187. Okay, okay. I'm older than dirt, but I'm not that old. (laughs) You know why we celebrate birthdays? So we know how old we are? That's a good answer, yeah, yeah. Except when you get to a certain age, you no longer want birthdays, but you get to a certain age, you're either 29 or 30, hmm? You know, you, you, the, the nine-year-old says you always want birthdays. Ah. <laughs> you get to a certain age and you want to stay 29 or 39. Or 89. Or <laughs> Everybody is special. And once a year, we celebrate the fact that you're here. We have a birthday party. And we sing happy birthday to people. And sometimes if you go to their party, you bring them a little gift because they're special. She brought you perfume? Holy smokes. That's from me, you get a big From you, you get a big present, she says. <laughs> oh, I had a birthday not too long ago, too. I got to- tools to play with. I like to play with tools. Some of them make a lot of noise. Well, yeah, like a chainsaw, yeah. Anyway, we have birthdays, and we celebrate birthdays because we're special. Now, we have a very special church here. We're really lucky to have this church, and all that it means. Yeah, yeah. The best part is, she says, it's big. Who started the whole church thing? Ooh. (laughs) This church. Okay. Who knows the name of the church when it was first started? Where are the historians? Come on. It was a Methodist church. Who started it? What was the name? John. Hmm? John. John. No, uh, actually, the first person in the area was Barbara Heck. She uh, started the communities of, uh, of, of studies that grew into the Methodist church that started this, but that's boring, isn't it? Let's sing happy birthday to our church. Wait, wait, wait. You know what's funny? Happy birthday to you.
I want you to remember that we are special. We are special on our birthdays. We are special because we belong to this place, but mostly we're special because we belong to God. No matter how you feel about yourself, you're special. Yeah, yeah, very well. Yes? There can't be one person that's not special. You're right, you know, because we're all God's people. That's profound. Let's say a prayer. Thank you, God, that we are each special. That we are each special. And that you love us. And that you love us. Amen. Amen. Who knows the question? Whose Father? Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now. Don't go away. Go back to where you were sitting, and we're going to have a baptism, and then you get to go to the God's playroom. All right? Okay? Okay. <laughs>
holy, right? <coughs> Pastor Kim always gives me the advice, walk slowly and look holy, so there we go. <laughs> Our reading today is from Deuteronomy 30, 11 to 18, <clears throat> and it is chosen life, not death. Moses said to Israel, you know God's laws, and it isn't possible to obey them. His commands aren't in heaven, so you can't excuse yourselves by saying, how can we obey the Lord's commandments? They are in heaven, and no one can go up to get them. Bring, then bring them down and explain them to us. And you can't say, how can we obey the Lord's commands? They are across the sea, and someone must go across. Then bring them back and explain them to us. No, these commands are nearby, and you know them by heart. All you have to do is obey. Today I am giving you a choice. You can choose life and success or death and disaster. I am commanding you to be loyal to the Lord, to live the way he has told you, and to obey his laws and teachings. You are about to cross the Jordan River and take the land that he is giving you. If you obey him, you will live and become successful and powerful. On the other hand, you may choose to disobey the Lord and reject him. So I'm warning you that if you bow down and worship other gods, you won't have long to live. In this reading, we hear God's voice. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
come into our time of prayer together, I'd like to remind you about the prayer wall that's located just outside my office, just through the doors at the back here. There's so many prayers up there right now. It's a wonderful place to be able to share our, our concerns, our joys, our thanks as we place them up there and as we walk past during the day just to stop and pick a few prayers and just pray for the, the prayers that are up there. This week we also um, pray for another church in our community and we pray today for the 180th anniversary of St. John's United Church. So we uh, think of them today too as they celebrate their anniversary. And for our Wall Street ministry as well today we pray for all of the volunteers in every way that have volunteered their time and their efforts and their talents to uh, serve the church in our community and we just thank God for them today. I believe we have a picture up there, Dustin, of baby Lena that we've been praying for for the last few weeks. There she is. We've been praying for her for um, quite a few weeks now, and she's now over one kg and uh, pardon? Three, three pounds. Uh, so uh, wonderful that uh, prayers are being answered there, but she still needs our prayers, and the family needs our prayers as we remember them. Let's pray together. Gracious, loving God, as we do come here today, we are just so thankful. We're thankful for this place. We're, we're thank you for the building, yes, but it is, it's a wonderful building. It serves us well, but we are most thankful for the church, the Wall Street Church, which is the people, people who have come through the doors of this church for so many years people who have served this community and served this country. And Lord, we thank you for being able to come here openly to worship. We thank you for being able to uh, worship with our friends in the community. And we thank you for the light that this church has been to the community. And Lord, as we look into the future, yes, these are always challenging times for any church. But we believe that you will guide us. We will believe that you will give us the vision that we need to serve your people, to bring your hope, your love, your grace into this world. And so, Lord, we just pray that uh, well, we put the future of our church in your hands. And we pray that we will continue to do the ministry and build your kingdom here on earth. So we give you thanks. Lord, as we come in this morning, we are aware that there are so many in our congregation who are suffering from health challenges at this time. They may be awaiting tests. They may be waiting for results. They might be going through treatment. They may have a chronic illness that is with them each day of their life. It may be physical. It may be mental. Lord, you know us. And you... As Jesus is the great physician, we just ask that you will lay your hands upon our friends, and we pray in a special way this morning for Bill and Rita Borger, for Ed Maloney, and for baby Lena, and Lord, so many others that don't wish their names to be shared. But you know them, Lord. You know each person, and we pray for them to feel your presence close to them at this time. And we pray for your healing hand upon them those who are going through a time of grief. May they just feel your arms wrapped around them, your comfort, that peace that goes beyond anything that we can understand. And may you just be with them each step of the way. Look after the logistical things that have to happen. But look after their hearts, dear Lord. May they feel you close to them. Lord, we are thankful for the mission and service fund that helps within this country and all around the world. And today we lift up the Chipembe Farm College of Agriculture in Zambia. And Lord, may your blessing be upon them, even this day. And Lord, we are mindful of things that have happened in our country. We lift up the family of the, uh, the farm family in Alberta that lost their three daughters in that terrible accident. And we just pray for your comfort with them. Lord, we are going into our election tomorrow. We, first of all, thank you that we live in a country where we can agree to disagree. We live in a country where we can openly go and vote without fear of 
retribution or of violence. And we just lift up our election into your hands, Lord, and may you give guidance, and may you bless our, our land. Lord, we think of those around the world who are going through such a struggle, and we continue to pray for the Syrian refugees and for refugees from all countries that are living outside of their homes, hoping for a permanent place to live where they can be live in peace. And so we just raise them up to you, Lord, at this time. Lord, we give you thanks for the many wonderful things that happen, and we are so thankful for the baptism this morning, and we just pray for Reed and his family. And may you just uh, wrap your arms of love around them and watch over Reed through these years ahead. And Lord, we give you thanks for the children this morning. We, they're not just the future of the church, they are the church now. And may you just watch over and guide them in every way. And so, Lord, we come before you. We lift up our burdens. We lift up our prayers of thanks. We know you are there as you were thousands of years before. You are also there for us this day. And so be with us and watch over us in every way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen and amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and the 15th verse. Today, I am giving you a choice between good and evil. For weeks now, we've been hearing that tomorrow, we're going to be giving what? Uh, a defining choice between good or evil, between blessing and curse. I suppose that depends upon your perspective. Election day, 36 hours, give or take a bit, to revisit and reaffirm values and consider identity. Isn't that also what we're asked to do on an anniversary weekend? Revisit reaffirm, and once again, choose. Anniversaries can be curious uh, celebrations and tricky to calibrate, I would think, for a congregation like Wall Street. Do you look back, and it sounds like you do, 187 years, to the vibrant 19th century Methodist roots, or 90 years, and the brave folk who risk church union? Most church anniversaries include some emphasis on the stuff. At least for the Anglicans, usually the practice would be for a committee to be struck uh, to highlight and display some of the artifacts. We'd have photographs of early events. We'd have records, perhaps, of donations. I felt a little more secure up here today because I can hide behind this as opposed to behind a, a music stand. <laughs> But at times, our stuff speaks. Every Sunday morning when I would step into the pulpit at St. Paul's, I would look down on a brass plaque. And in the words embedded in the pulpit were these words from the Gospel, Sir, we would see Jesus. But beautiful items, stuff, can't tell us too much, can they, about the enduring vitality of God's people in the place. For that, we have to think about the spine. We have to think about the stabilizing inner structure that has held you up as body of Christ and that keeps you walking forward into your future. Deuteronomy 30 is an anniversary sermon of sorts. The chapter preceding it explains the purpose of their gathering in 29 and 10, if you had your Bibles. Today, you are standing in the presence of the Lord your God. Verse 12, you are here today to enter into this covenant that the Lord God is making with you and to accept its obligations. Verse 13, why? So that the Lord may now confirm you again as his people and be your God as he promised you and your ancestors. The entire book of Deuteronomy is actually, or central to the whole book of Deuteronomy, is this conviction that in every generation, people have to stand and reaffirm again their intentions as those beloved and belonging to God. In the words placed on Moses' lips in Deuteronomy 30, the people were being asked to think about a question that I think ought to be asked at every anniversary. Okay, then. What is it that has made you great? What is it that distinguishes you as a congregation? Where does the Brockville mind go when they think of Wall Street? For the Hebrews, for Israel, that was easy. They knew their story. And this week, the passage in your fall series goes right to the heart of it, right to the nub. They'd been given, you see, a code. They had been given a manifesto. We know it as the Ten Commandments. Isn't it hard to get used to somebody else's pulpit? <laughs> my notes keep sliding down to my knees and back and forth today. <laughs> We know them as the Ten Commandments, the ten most quoted, best-known rules humankind has ever heard, straightforward, no-nonsense rules for how the Israelites were to relate to God 
and to each other. It was a radiant, protective manifesto that would distinguish this group as a people of care and loyalty and fairness. It was a code with a very clear starting point. Love for God and the need for the constant recalibration of perspective that comes in worship. It was a code that emphasized the need for balance, for Sabbath, space, time, leisure every week for soul repair. They were rules that stressed care and honor for the vulnerable, for parents, for employees, for foreigners, even for their animals. It was a commandment, a set of rules that mandated contentment with what one has. Do not commit adultery. Do not covet anything that rightfully belongs to someone else. It was a code of respect for life. Do not kill. It was never a case that God would love them if they followed this code, if they followed these rules. It, rather, it was because God loved them that he spelled them out. I imagine a number of you today have backyard swimming pools. The Jews came to refer to this code, this manifesto, as the fence. Your pool as a place of refreshment and joy, maybe not in October when you're having to put all the stuff away, but any responsible homeowner knows that the pool holds danger. And you have to have a fence up. And the fence is there to protect the unwary, the careless, who can tumble in and drown. So, chapter 30, their choice. Will this law, will these commandments, will this set of values continue to define you, Israel, in the years ahead? Congregations are perpetually facing defining choices. In 1882, Wall Street United Church was hopping. It was the fastest growing congregation in town. It was also described, I've read, as the least architecturally coherent. <laughs> Looks pretty good to me this morning, but why? Why? Because the people at that time made a choice. It was a radical choice. They made a choice to let their spine trump the stuff. Wall Street decided to dedicate worship space, who would have thought it, for children. Talk of church union was underway long before the Great War. And the spirituality in vogue at that time was progressive. It was sunny, it was optimistic. The assumption in almost all mainline churches was that the world was getting better and more people, humankind, more spiritually evolved. And then, when all such talk tanked, in the aftermath of the horrors of war, a, des a whole generation of men and women made their choice, their choice to walk away from the faith. Why? As one of your own churchmen of the period put it, we have painted roses on the lids of hell. 1925, and another brave choice, to die to self-interest, to live in the hope of resurrection. A new Canadian church, an inclusive church, radically inclusive church, but grounded in essentials. It would be very hard to find a creed with more spine than the one chosen in the basis of union. I quote your own history. We build upon the foundations laid by the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We, are, we affirm our belief in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament as the primary and ultimate standard of Christian faith and life. We acknowledge the teaching of the great creeds of the ancient church. 
we further maintain our allegiance to the evangelical doctrines of the Reformation. And now, it's been quite the week for baseball. Quite the week. <laughs> and it will go on, and hopefully on, and on and on. My younger brother knew Yogi Berra, New York uh, Yankees catcher. He knew him because Yogi Berra was a lifelong volunteer uh, as a member of the Salvation Army Advisory Boards in New York City. And I read that when giving directions to his home, Yogi Berra said, when you come to the fork in the road, take it. <laughs> and we go, huh? And our choices can feel like that. Which one? Which fork? To the left? To the right? Which way is safe? Which way will open up the new horizon? Who will be lining the road that we, Wall Street, are called to serve? How can we really know if we're choosing life and blessing? I think this morning that we take spine find strength, find comfort from the fact that the fundamental choice we're called to make today is far less about what than about whom. How did Joshua put it? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Perhaps Father Thomas Merton prayed this choice challenge best, and I leave it with you in closing today in the words of his oh-so-famous prayer. My Lord God, I've no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself, and the fact that I think I'm following your will does not mean I'm actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I'm doing. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Blessed Anniversary Wall Street. Amen.
I want to thank you so much, Dr. Barbara Robinson, for being with us this morning. I think I could have listened to you for another couple of hours, so if you've got time. <laughs> and I dare say I think you know more about our history than we do, which is uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing uh, God's message with us this morning. Well, let's go from this place and let us once again lean to the spine, lean to the things that matter most and lay down the other stuff that doesn't matter so much. Let us go from this place and choose life. Choose life for ourselves. Choose life for our church. Choose life for the community and the world. And may we be blessed and may we be a blessing as we were in the past. So let us be today and in the future. And may the blessings of God, the source of love, of Christ Jesus, the love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit loves power be with you today and forevermore. Amen. And now let us grab a hand or a shoulder as we sing, Go Now in Peace. <coughs> Go. Reach out to